Welcome back everyone. In the previous video we watched our section editor, Tim, respond to the recommendations made by our peer reviewers. We then watched our author, Jalal, upload the requested revisions. The peer review stage was then completed, and in this video we're going to continue on into the copy editing stage. Here we're logged in as Tim. We can quickly see the notification letting us know that we need to assign a copy editor using the assign link in the participants list. That's available right here. Let's change that to copy editors. And we can see we've got a few to choose from. Now your journal, it might just be you doing all of this, so you don't need to assign somebody else. But for journals that do have separate copy editors, this is what we'll do. Let's pick Anna. And we can see on this drop down, there's a couple of messages we could select, but the copy editing request is the one we want. We can see that her name will go into the email and it won't just be, it won't just say name. It'll actually put her name in there. We'll see that in a minute. Um, it gives the steps that she needs to follow, where she can link to to get right here. And we'll say, okay, that email's gone off to her. It's also created a copy editing request in the discussions. And that's it. We're ready now to just sit back and wait for Anna to do her work. All right, now we know Anna has received an email notification letting her know that we'd like her to do the copy editing for this submission. She can follow that link to log into OJS. And from her dashboard, we can see she's got a very limited set of options. She's only got a link to submissions. Again, none of the, the journal settings are available to her as a copy editor. Uh, it's going to keep her very focused just on her tasks. She's got her queue and there's only one that's assigned to her and that's the one that we want. In the archives, if she had previous submissions she'd worked with as a copy editor, those would be visible here. But let's just take a look at this one. We'll click on it. We can see we're in the copy editing stage. There's the draft file, and if she clicks on that, that'll be downloaded to her desktop so she can see the task ahead of her. There's the copy editing discussion that our section editor, Tim, created when he asked Anna to take on this rule. There's two of them right here. Ignore that. That's just a little bug in my installation. Um, so Anna is now going to work offline. She's going to open up this file in her desktop go through, do all of her copy editing, work on it, and get it ready. Once she's done that work, she can reply to the copy editing request from Tim. Add a message. She can upload that file and we'll select article text, upload. There's the copy edited one that she's been working on. Continue, looks good, continue. Confirm if there were multiple files again. This is where she could upload the other ones, but we're just going to work with this one. There it is. We can see everything looks good and say OK. And we can see that she's made her reply. She could also create a discussion that involved both Tim and Jalal, the author. those. And the system will check here to confirm that this is a revision and not a new file. That's fine. 
that's fine. Don't need to add another file. It's complete. And say OK. And now the author also has a chance to look at those copy edits and make sure everything is all right. Once she receives word from both Tim, the section editor, and from Jalal, the author, that they're happy with the copy edits, she can upload that final version. You'll see that there's some copies from earlier in the workflow, um, some of the attached files, and if those ones were fine, for example, the one that she sent to the author and to the section editor, they had no changes required, then she could just select one of those and say OK and pull that forward as the final copy edited version. If, however, they got back to her and said, oh, we want you to change something on page 7 or make an adjustment here, she could make the changes and then upload a new file um, in the copy edited grid. So we now have our final copy edited version uploaded, and we're just going to let Tim know that it's all done. We don't need to add an attachment because we did upload that final one in the copy edited grid. And that's it. We're now finished the copy editing stage. Let's take a look at what Tim sees now. All right, Tim's received email notification from Anna letting him know that she's uploaded the final copy edited version so he can come back to his dashboard, go to the submission, all the discussions are here, and there's that copy edited version. He's going to click on that, downloads it, able to read it. If he's got any further questions, go back up into the discussions, ask for some clarification, could communicate with the author if there were any final questions that he still had. But we're going to say everything looks good, he's happy with the work that Anna has done, and we're ready to send to production. So we're going to make sure that we're always keeping the author in the loop, let them know that it's complete and it's moving to production. We can see a link to the original draft file that came over from peer review, but by default, we've got a checkbox next to the copy edited file that Anna had worked on and uploaded and let us know was the final version, and that's the one we want checked. So we'll make that decision and watch. We jump over to the next stage. We're now in production, and we'll take a look at this production stage in the next video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you there.